so I've seen on YouTube on um, this woodwork I think it is um, young chap does himself a, a phone case cover or in veneer so I'm going to try and do the same and being myself I'm going to try and make it as difficult as possible which will be interesting and different not at all so I have decided on a pattern of I'm not sure how well that's going to come out of um, leaves stacked up with a dragonfly which you can't quite see here so that's what I'm hopefully going to be going for we shall see how well that comes out so first things first you need to get yourself a plastic phone cover this one is slightly flexible it's not I don't think it's quite the one that um, the other video used but it was what I could get really so I've made a block the same size as my phone and then I've built it up on the back because my phone has got uh, curves in two directions it curves that way and it curves this way so I've had to kind of shape it round a bit so I don't know how much pressure I'm going to put on this and I don't want this to bow in as I'm working so I could have made it all in one block and sanded it round but as I've said before I hate sanding so minimal sanding going on here so I've got just a bit of um, old uh, ply or fiberboard, whatever it is, a couple of other bits of wood just to give it a, a curve, and then some folded kitchen roll just to kind of soften out the top like that. A decent layer here. I don't want it to ooze out too much, but hopefully, I can get rid of that. Material. Make sure it comes up high enough to cover the arch of the phone case. So being very generous with it. First side. There we go. Press that in and then pull over this tape just to apply it bit more pressure. I don't have a clamp that I could use for this, so tape's going to have to do. Mm. Okay, I've taken off all the masking tape on one side, so you can see where I've got nice variations of colour and shape going on. I'm going to um, do a little bit of pyrography on these as well once they're fixed. So, I'm just going to go for a fairly thin, a very thin layer of glue. enough to soak into the wood but not so thin that it sticks up between the pieces because then when you put the filler in it will just eat through and get in the way laying that over the top. I deliberately made the pattern oversized anyway, so that's not a problem. Okay, press it down. I've got my board with tape on it. I'm going to cover that. Mm. Pot of varnish. I'm going to leave that to dry for at least an hour, probably two. Okay, so I've given this about a half hour to, to set and it's pretty much rock hard now so I'm just going to cut off the bulky bits so I can start sanding I'm going to do most of this with the Dremel saves my hands, saves getting completely bored at my brain sanding so here we go ok so I've taken off the main bulk now I'm just slowly working down so the edge of wood is pretty much level with the um, edge of the case. So that's going to have to be a bit of hand sanding, but I don't mind doing that much hand sanding, I prefer it to doing this much. So, so I'll do the other side here and then cut back on the front here, because I've got around about 3 or 4 mil sticking out the front I don't really want there, so I'll, I'll 
going to have to take the block out to do that. I don't know how well that's going to um, to go, so we shall see. Okay, so eBay has come through and I have some new epoxy. Um, this is slightly more expensive than the previous one I had, so hopefully it should work better. It's um, supposed to dry clear, which is also useful. So I've given this case a good wipe down to get rid of any loose dust or plastic from the various sanding procedures. And I've also formed over my veneer, so I just clamped it into place so it gets that, that curve going before I start. So, here goes. Make sure I've got a nice even layer all the way over the plastic fairly thick towards the sides so that it will fill in and build up as I press things down. Right. Okay, so I've marked this camera up so I know where I'm placing it. About there. And just turn it over and make sure I'm fairly equal. So I've got the big clamps in the middle, make sure it's held in place. Should I go from this direction I think? Not quite even. Like that. And then use a whole load of small ones to clip onto the sides here. Okay, so I've um, cut back all the edges of, of this and got them to pretty much flat, flush with this side here. The um, top and bottom I've sanded roughly down. Still a little bit more to go, but I need to fill it first before I do any more because this is too fragile on the edges. Um, this epoxy was supposed to dry clear, but it's gone, if you can see there, gone red but I think actually looking at what of the plastic I can see it's kind of melted the plastic a bit so oops but never mind it shouldn't be visible when I finished so now I've got to work on the sides so I'm just gonna gently rough up the wood here because this veneer has become quite smooth so I'm gonna rough it slightly so that the glue is something to key to And I've got my strips to go on the side. Okay, so I've whittled down the um, excess on the wood here, just down to the level of the veneer on the back, and then down to the uh, level of the veneer here, and slightly beveled it around. I'm going to sort that out with some sandpaper at the end anyway. So I've just started that shape. So now I'm working out where the um, dragonfly goes. So I've measured out on my phone where the camera is, so I'm not crossing over the camera too much. And I've cut the body of my dragonfly from a green uh, veneer. And I've got the, the wings marked out on a lighter green. And I've also bent some thin copper wire into kind of outline shapes as well. This is slightly thicker than I'd like to use because um, it is, is generally it's about three times the depth of the veneer itself so I'm going to have to dig into the plastic to get this to fit which is going to be interesting but once that sits in that should look quite nice so I'm now cutting out the, bod uh, the body shape here I'm leaving the um, tape on to protect these pieces as I, as I cut through. So this one I'm only going through the top layer. The rest obviously I'm going to need to go a bit deeper. Okay, so I've pulled off all the tape and I've actually cut in for the um, dragonfly. And I've made these holes intentionally larger to start with so that when I put the, um, when I grind out for the um, copper I don't have to come through the surface layer again, I have to go just straight into the black underneath. So, I've given it a really, really good um, slathering with some wax. 
and then I'm just using a stiff brush to clear out all the gaps. I don't want those filled with wax. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Right, so now I've uh, made up another uh, batch of um, some filler from the powder. This time I've added a lot more paint but no glue. So it's got a really, uh, deep rich colour on it this time. So I'm going to use a fancy wee tool to apply this to the phone case. Hopefully it shouldn't be too messy, she says. I need to make sure it gets into all of the cracks. I wax this first in order to give the veneer itself some protection so it hopefully shouldn't soak into the lighter woods. I mean I'd have to sand a lot more than I intend to. Okay so I've um, sanded back to the veneer and you can see where the, um, the filler has managed to fill in the cracks in the veneer which also helps to support them and give them some, some some strength for the next phase as it were. So I've got my smallest drilling bit here and I've got some diamond bits that are quite a bit finer. So what I'm going to do is very carefully cut out where the little diamante is going to go and where the copper is. At this stage I'm just going down to the um, black wood underneath. I'm going to use the diamond tips to go deeper so I can actually set in the, um, the wire. So I've got to work fairly gently because I don't know how frangible, how um, delicate these um, veneers are now. They were quite delicate to start with so I hope that putting the wax on has given them some level of um, kind of protection, so here goes. So I'm using a bit of spare wire to get the epoxy into place. Don't think I'm going to need very much. Okay, so that's dried and set, and it's quite solid. It's stayed clear for the most part. It's a couple of kind of blobby bits where it's gone white but I can probably file them down later on. So now I need to cut out the holes here. So I'm just slightly concerned that this might tear out so I'm going to support it with some masking tape. This is right on this edge where the wing is. I'm back to my kind of somewhat drilly head, so I'm going to gradually work through in layers. I think I don't want it to kind of leap down. I'm going to grab some, well, a couple of layers or something just to pad out behind. Okay, so I'm going to gradually work my way through, and I'll come back to you when I finish cutting. Start with one of the boxes because that's going to be easier to to show you. So first of all, sponge brush and fairly light coating around the outside edge and the inside rim. It's more like a, a varnish this way than a, than a resin, but never mind. So we're just going to add some protection to this. Probably going to need sanding at the 
inside but no problem. Okay, so get that fairly evenly all the way around and any bubbles in it don't really cause problems at this point. Make sure I've covered all the bare wood here. And then ooh, ooh, stick it on top of there and drop on a wee bit and then just work it around to the edges and this will self level still so I definitely did something right with the resin because this is all completely dried not um, sticky at all I've got a fair amount of drips that I need to sand off but that's not a problem and my foam case is looking fabulous I've got a small drip here and something to tidy up on the back but other than that that's perfect I am pleasantly surprised so I'd call this one a success. It's only the tenth time I've used resin and the first time it's actually worked. <laughs>